Okay, so you need to clean up the carbs on your bike. Maybe it's been sitting around for a while, got some stale gas, maybe not running so good. Either way, the carbs need attention, but you're not quite sure how to do it. No worries, I got you. I mean, how hard can this be, right? Let's do it. Okay, first up, the main takeaway here is to just knock off the dirt and the junk on the outside of the carbs before we crack them open. Basically, just scrub them down and blow them dry, that's it. Okay, let's get on to this. First thing you gotta do is notice this thing's not very stable. If we wanna work on these caps here, or have it braced up like this to get into these bottom bowls, it just doesn't, it's just not comfortable. It just, we wanna make it right and stable. Now, if you look on Amazon, they actually do sell a stand for this. It's a little pricey, 100 and, uh, I think it's 195, see it right here? 195 bucks for a purpose-built stand to have this thing up and locked in perfect. A little too much coin for me. I'm wasting all of my money on food and shelter, so yeah, out of my league. So you know what, you can improvise in many ways. You know, you could use an old pillow. It's not very effective, but I mean, if you kind of bury it in there, eh, yeah, it'd be okay. It's not exactly stable. Yeah, that's really not that good. So don't use that. A cell phone. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Unless you got a folding one. Yeah. Don't use a cell phone. A buddy of mine built one out of wood that was very effective. See it here? Very innovative. Just a few bits of scrap plywood I think he used. Just He probably found it on the side of the road. Just hack them at the right angle. Make a nice little cradle. Make it tight and tidy. And uh, the carbs sit in there beautifully. As you can see, it works very well. He's a pretty creative guy. He also made a motorcycle themed one that works really well. He uses it all the time out of uh, disc brake. He used handlebars that he just chopped and bent and kind of welded to that base. Very effective, look how good that thing is. And a little bit of garden hose for protection. Sits in there perfectly. You know what, I thought I'm kind of creative too. I got some scrap out back. I made this monstrosity here out of an old swing arm. You'll recognize this as a swing arm from a 19, probably 78 RM 125. It's kind of big and ugly, sort of like my buddy Bill. And I'm scheduled for a nap soon. Just kidding, Bill, relax. He's not that ugly. He's big though, the guy's freaking huge. He's like 6'5", 380 pounds. It's a freaking monster. Don't wanna piss him off. Yeah, Bill, you're not that ugly. You're freaking huge though. So yeah, you can make something like that. But you know what? What I have found to be the best, just keep it simple, always keep it simple. Foam, bits of foam that I found out behind a Walmart in a dumpster when I was looking for some old shoes. So yeah, look how good this thing works. You wanna work on the bottom of your carb set? Just stick it in there like that. Just jam in the bits of foam like that. Are you kidding me? What? There's 195 bucks saved right there. Very stable, fully adjustable. You can flip that around. You can do the tops. Everything wedges in nicely. And even if it doesn't fit perfectly, you can trim to fit. Oh, look at that. So all you gotta do is just be creative. Whatever you come up with, just get your carbs stable so they're not flopping around like a Ziploc bag full of noodles. That's all you gotta do. All right, get that, get some tools, and let's get into this thing. Okay, first thing I usually go for is the float bowl drain bolt. Uh, while it's in position here and all bolted down, it's easy to get it out, no issues. Then there's four bolts usually that hold on the float bowl. Tap that thing open and look inside. Wow, this one's really clean. Hope yours is that clean. Sometimes they can be pretty mucky. Pull out the float axle or pin so you can get that out of there. And then there's the float needle. Just pull that little guy out, add that to the pile. There's the float needle seat. You can get that out of there. There's nothing to it really. A little washer underneath there. Don't lose that. And there's the main jet. Now you can back that off. And that's the thing you would pretty much adjust or change if you were gonna mess with your jetting. Just maybe take note of the number on that one just so you've got it on record. Then you can take out the emulsion tube. Basically just a tube with a bunch of holes in it. A little rubber washer, add that to the stack. Now this is the monkey here that is gonna cause you trouble. That's the pilot jet. And guaranteed that thing is gonna be clogged up if your bike's running crappy. Nine times out of 10, it's that culprit. Now, on this carb, it has a fuel screw. So that's the fuel screw and it's factory set. So I'm gonna, that's half, one, half, two, half. So that's set at two and a half turns out from buried all the way in. Remember that, how sharp that thing is. Check inside there, yeah, there's a spring in there. You wanna get that out. And there might be a little washer or a grommet on yours underneath all that or on top. Just take note of that. Now here's the beauty of this little foam stand. Look how easy this is. Flip it out. Restack, get the foam in there, wedge it in place, boom, you're done. That is absolute magic. I love that thing. So simple, so effective. Okay, now we're going for the air screw. Same idea. So that's half, one, half. Okay, that's set at one and a half turns to bottom out. Okay, remember that. Or write it down. There it is right there. Same idea. Out, all good. 
And there's a little spring hiding inside there too. Grab that little guy. Now we're gonna go for the caps on top. I'm not gonna muck around under here too much. These are usually factory set. I'm not really taking any of that apart. I'm just gonna replace the gasket on there and that's pretty much it. Now keep all your bits for each carb together and separate from the others and just tackle the other three, however many you have on the rack and that's it. Okay, now there's all kinds of different ways you can get these parts cleaned up. I like to use this thing, it's an ultrasonic cleaner, but you can still get great results just with hot soapy water and a toothbrush. You can just do it in the bathroom sink. Or if you're feeling really brave, next time the wife's in the tub having a soak, pick all the parts and chuck them in with her. What the hell are you doing? Have fun, do the job. You idiot. Uh, yeah, probably not a great idea, but whatever method you use, just get these bits clean, then we can put this thing back together, let's go. Okay, so now's a good opportunity to head out to the shed, spray down the inside of the carb with some brake cleaner. You know, scrape off all the old gaskets, blow out all the little interior holes and tubes on the inside of the carb body. Just kind of wipe it all down as best you can. Okay, and we got all the parts clean. Let's see what it's gonna take to put this puzzle back together. How hard can it be? I mean, they only fit in one spot. It's pretty tough to get it wrong. Uh, one thing I wanna mention before we put it back together is you may as well, if you, while we got it this far apart, replace the O-rings. In this case, there's four. There's one on the emulsion tube, one on the float bowl drain bolt, one on the air screw, and one on the fuel screw. It's a good idea to replace so another thing to mention is as we put it together i usually keep a little tub of oil to dip my finger into and as you assemble these parts just give them a little wipe down with some oil they just go together real easy all the good guys do it so i don't know we should do it too follow their lead they're doing it for a reason let's get to it okay there's the float needle seat got a thin little washer pop that guy into place and lock her down then you go for the float needle and then the set of floats pop in the axle that's all good then you got the emulsion tube drive that home and then the main jet, stick that on. Tighten it up, go for the fuel screw. Uh, two and a half turns out, I think, on that one. And there's the pilot jet, lock that guy down. All right, I got a fresh pack of gaskets. I'm gonna put one on that float bowl side there, and then get the float bowl itself, and line it up, correct side out, because you can't mix them up if you got the one and the four mixed up. And lock it down, and then go for the drain bolt. Push that in, close it down. Okay, flip this mess over. And there's the air screw. Slide on the spring, jam it home. Factory spec, on this one I think it was one and a half turn. And a fresh gasket for the top cap. That's all clean. Tighten that guy in place, three screws. Looking good. That whole procedure repeat for the remaining carbs on your rack. Okay, you got your carbs all cleaned up and they're looking pretty good. Now all you gotta do is go put it on your bike and go for a ride. But before you do, you might want to check the fuel tap peacock on your bike because if that thing's not working very good, you ain't going anywhere. And if you need to know how to rebuild one, check out this video right here. You might be glad you did. All right, I got stuff to do. See ya. Just replace those. Looks like I've lost the spring. I'm an idiot. What the Ah, oh, there it is. Fucker. <laughs>